I'm using my mini miniature gouache kit. I've got titanium white, phthalo blue, alizarin crimson permanent, cadmium yellow medium, cadmium lemon. And there might be a little bit of ivory black, but I don't know that I really used it too much during this painting. This is where I'm stationed. I'm set up. It looks like right on the edge, but there's a little bit of distance between me and the precipitous fall. I really like this thalo blue for sky colors. It pretty much matches it right out of the tube with a little bit of white mixed in. And now I'm just using this big brush to brush in some clouds. I kept my water cup wedged in between some rocks beneath me. And I'm kind of wetting this other area so that it'll be a little bit more receptive too. This base layer of, of stone color. The idea here is to just kind of capture what I can capture in a short amount of time on a small sketch. Um, the essence of, of the scene, get some color notes, get some shapes. But um, part of it, I think, is mostly just for the experience rather than necessarily a photorealistic rendering per se, but more of just experiencing what it's like to to plein air paint at the top of a mountain and um, just experience this beauty of nature and and sit here for a while. It was really nice. But I think secondarily from an artistic perspective, I want to use some of these sketches that I've been making on this trip to you know, possibly combined with photo reference to maybe make some more large studio pieces later on. And um, so here I'm putting in some darks uh, and kind of indicating that it's not actually really a castle. It's it's a, um, a fire lookout. And now that I have that base layer in and it's almost immediately dry because, well, one, the climate's fairly dry up here, and two, this, uh, because it's so windy, the gouache is, is drying very quickly. So I can go in right over the top of this rather quickly and indicate some of the crags and cracks of, of those rocks. One thing that is difficult is there isn't a lot of light and shadow because the sun's behind me. So all of those planes of the rock faces that are facing me are more or less all receiving direct sunlight. So there isn't a strong pattern of shadow and light and I kind of have to rely on color and, and shape a little bit. That's why I think carving in the suggestion of of these darker um, crags and cracks and fissures in the rock formations is what's going to make it look like um, sort of the mountainous rocky features that it is and not just a big pile of sand. But that's what I'm working towards anyway. The views are just mind-blowing. The complexity is mind-blowing too and I'm thinking about ways to try to just reduce down the essence of what I'm looking at into something that's achievable. I can't paint every single tree, I can't paint every every rock, I can't even paint you know every every crack and jagged line so I'm trying to reduce things down into approximations of what I'm seeing, approximations of what I'm observing and in a way it's, it's like taking notes 
versus dictating. You know, if you're listening to a lecture or reading a book or something, you wouldn't dictate every single word. You know, that would just be a copy. But, you know, if you annotate your own notes and perceptions and, and what you glean from it, um, you know, it won't be 100% of the content, but I think that you learn something from that process. And to me, that's kind of what what this is. Beyond just being an enjoyable experience, it's a series of judgment calls where you're looking at it and you're thinking, what's important and what do I need to remember? And how do I capture that in paint? I think to me, that's kind of, the interesting process with all of this, rather than using words, using color and shape and brush strokes to, to take notes of what you're seeing and not just what you're seeing, but what it means and how you feel and all of that. coming in with some darker trees. There's there's like an initial light layer of, of foliage and then the much darker trees as well. So I'm trying to layer that over the top. And in my mind, I'm kind of connecting the dots instead of individual trees. I, I'm having to think in clumps of trees. And trying to add a little bit more highlights to the form. There's going to be, you know, the upward facing planes will be slightly brighter than the vertical planes. But I probably could have done it at a different time of day and had a totally different pattern of shadow and light that might have made this a little bit easier to paint. Beggars can't be choosers, and I'm definitely not complaining. Well, I'm just reasserting some clouds now, making them a little bit brighter, cleaning up some areas, trying to create that sense of, of depth. To me, it helps if you have something in the foreground and in the background and various distances. It was super windy up here. And disaster struck. Ah! This wasn't the only thing that blew away, unfortunately. My hat, my hat fell down there. Had that hat half my life. But there's just no way. There's no way that I can can grab that. So rest in peace, little guy. Sort of an appropriate, appropriate ending.